In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at the enhancements to the AI Sky replacement tool as it exists in PowerDirector 365 and new PowerDirector version 21. I have five videos I've loaded into the media room. You'll see why in a moment. To get to this tool, we're going to click on the Plugins menu at the very top, and from the drop down, we're going to choose the AI Sky replacement option. That will open up my AI Sky replacement tool. There are four major sections. You have a source video at the top. You have a host of default Sky replacements you can use and you can add to them. We'll show you about that. You have a preview screen of your video. And then on the lower right, you also have six sliders. We'll talk about what those can do. The first step is to load a video. When I click on the button in the upper left, Import Video, I can import from my hard drive. I can navigate to the file system where I want to find the image and use it. I can use a sky image. I can use any image at all for the sky. It doesn't matter. Then I can also import from the media room if I happen to have the video there already. I do in this case, so we'll use that option. We'll take this Eiffel Tower and click on it and click on OK. Now we have that video. Now you notice we don't have a play button here. We can't play the video, but we can move to any frame we want to. We can use these left and right to move frame by frame to see what it will look like when the sky is compared with that particular frame of our source video. When we come to producing the video at the end, we can also use a mark in and mark out to change the duration, or we can drag these elements here to shorten the video. So we can determine what part of the video we want in our output. So those are the ways in which we can modify that. But we're not ready for the output yet. We want to see what it's going to look like. So the first thing I want to do is find a sky I'd like to use. Let's assume we want to use this one here. We'll click on that and see how well it works. Now we find the sky. It did a pretty good job. It found the sky under the arch as well as to the left and to the right. But you will notice if you look carefully that it did not replace the sky in the girders. And it didn't do a great job underneath the arch with these flagpoles. So it's not perfect. But you can modify the blend between the sky and the video in a couple of ways. That's what the sliders are for. The default feather value is zero. If we move the feather to the left, what we're going to find is we have a very sharp edge between the sky and the other elements. If we move it to the right, it's much more of a soft edge, but you notice here we're actually washing out the building and some of the elements in the horizon. So I probably wouldn't use that in most cases. So this is how you can blend the two. There's the second slider is called Land Ambient. What's that about? This basically tells you the tone of the video in terms of color. If the, if the sky is a certain color, you want that reflected in the foreground in the video or not. The default is 30. Watch what happens when I turn it back to zero. Now you see much more the original video and the sky isn't influencing the color of the scene. I move it the other direction, you're going to find a lot more bluish tone where the sky dominates and overrides the color of the arch. So you can mix that any way you want. How much of the sky color do you want in your finished product? The next is sky fade. The default is zero. If I turn it all the way to 100%, we actually are looking at our original video with no mix. And so you can go all the way from the default, which is all sky, to mixing the pixels between the sky and the original image, whatever you think looks best. Then you have a position X and Y. Now X by default, your horizontal is always faded. You can't use it. Why? Because the width of the videos here is the width of my project. I have to scale them up to slide left and right. So if I change the scale value, you notice now I can move horizontally and it's counterintuitive. If I move the slider to the left a little bit, it will move the sky to the right. And you see the clouds here move a little bit to the right. If I move a little more, you're going to move a little more to the right. And X and Y, the Y position is up and down. I click a, to, a little bit to the right on the Y position. Okay, we see they move down. If I click to the left, it moved up. 
So that's a way you can modify the exact position of the sky. You can also modify the scale or set it back to zero, in which case you're going to find that you're, you have no option to move on the X axis. Now you can use any of the skies available here. Let's take another one for fun. Let's take a rainbow and put that in and you can modify your heart's content. If you want to add your own sky image, you click on the button in the lower left corner. That will take you to your file system and you can put any sky in that you like. Let me show you a couple of other things you need to be aware of by using a different example. I'm going to click on import video and we'll go back to our media room and let's do this valley, this canyon shot. Now here I have already have a sun in. What if I want to change the sun? I'm going to click on this image here and we're going to change the sun. Now it looks fine there, but notice I need to move to different frames because here I have the sun, but here I have in the original video the rays of the sun. So if I wanted to make that look a little bit more normal, what I have to do is I have to scale it up and I have to change my position on the X and Y values. And that looks a little better. And let's see if we go here. That's not bad, but notice that's really good for that frame, but it may not be so good for some other frames. You notice now I have kind of two suns over here. So if you're going to use an image with a sun in it, you have to look carefully at all the frames of your video to make sure it doesn't look rather odd when you're done. In this case, I'd use something other than a sun image. I'd pro also probably stay away from maybe a night sky because we have sun rays here. So let me take yet another one and show you this one. This was a very safe one to use. It's a beach scene. So I can take this beach scene and use something like this and see what it looks like when I have people here. I might want my feathering to be pretty sharp in this case, where I'm going to have some ghosting around the people. That's better. So you have to check it out scene by scene to see what it's going to look like. There we go. And again, we're going to have some issues probably with these folks running on the beach, in which case it'd probably be easier to pick a nice sky. And so you can modify as much as you want. When you're done, you click on Transform Video button in the lower right corner. That will go ahead and render your video. So it will put it in the media room and you can place it in the timeline. It will not edit your original video source video, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And then when it's done, you're going to see that it added it to your media room. If I want to find out where I put it, I'll right click on it and choose Open File Location and I find it's in my default drive under Documents, CyberLink Power Director. You can use it in future projects as well. So that's an overview of the Enhanced AI Sky Replacement in PowerDirector 365 and PowerDirector 21.